Well, first of all, I dare not think that we are going to compete with journalism, okay? So please understand that before I begin. Two things I'd like to say, what I'm going to talk about today is not rocket science. But I think another thing is also I want to out myself. I am not a digital native, but I think our company needs to deal with this disruptiveness in the transformation that's taking place. I think all this word cloud makes it quite clear what we are facing as much as you are facing. Um, digitalization, globalization, transformation, also of our whole industry, and also for us as a communicator within a company, how do we want to project this company in the outside world in the public domain? And one of the things I think is quite important to keep in mind, and it seems quite simple, but change is inevitable. And a lot of mindset and changing mindset within a company and organization is not so easy either. You can't imagine, if you think about it, we are in 140 different countries around the world. We have about 400 communicators in different capacities there. And how do we keep everybody on the same page with the same message? Of course, dealing with nuances in various countries. I think this photo, this is the inauguration of Benedict, Pope Benedict, and the other is Pope Francis. It just shows exactly what the world is like and that there's a whole new dimension out there that we have to face as a company when we're talking about communicating with the outside world. Our stakeholders have, and basically the people that we are communicating with, whether it's journalists, customers, also future talents, as well as our employees are very important for us. They have not changed. What has changed is this. We have 6,000 dealers around the world. And if you look from your right-hand side, the left-hand side is more or less the corporate area, which is I'm taking care of. But the marketing area, which breaks down, if you further go, you could do the lowest common denominator, those dealers are also dealing with channels. So you need guidelines. How do they approach the customers? And what is the feedback we're getting? Because we're talking about protecting our brands, promoting our brands, but at the same time, protecting and promoting this company around the world. Three things I would like to touch today, and I'm an old school PR person, I still believe it's about people. Business is people, and I still believe face in face with a good journalist. There's nothing like it. That's my personal opinion. Of course, digitalization is changing those dynamics, and we have to deal with that. Other thing is, internally, we have to change the organizational structure to fit and have a positive impact on the communication in the outside world. And this is the hard part also for us. Orchestration is key. How do you orchestrate a company our size, and as I said earlier, 400 communicators around the world? So, the discussion. Do we go newsroom or editorial hub? So, these are big buzzwords in the PR domain, also for companies our size. And um, we actually did something I think it's important. We actually did a survey internally. We asked employees, we asked uh, executives, what do they expect from us today as good communicators and in the future moving down the road? And also getting their feedback. We also did some benchmarking. And I also want to make clear, in the case of social media, in the case of this hub or the newsroom, we are not the first movers. We went to three or four different other companies who are really pioneers in this area who have been moving forward. I don't think it's a problem coming late into the game or in the middle of the game, but the thing was we want to learn from them what did they, what were the upsides and the downsides, and what could we learn and improve our hub or our newsroom moving forward. We also, this hub, we decided to call it a hub. And I will tell you why later, to avoid as newsroom. Because I think the connotation is very different if you say newsroom and if you say editorial hub. And this is one of the things that we really discussed. And I think in this business, and especially you as journalists, you understand the power of words. And I think you have to really define what you mean so people understand that this is a place that everyone can use. And a hub and a network is in the middle and trying to connect everything. The hub also needs to be as transparent as possible. With a company as large as BMW, and as I said earlier, in 140 different countries, we don't know what's going on exactly at every minute, every second, and it would be nice to know, because of course that helps us to improve the communications overall. So the three things the hub would do is to be transparent, 
and to be a central platform for everybody across the world. So part of it, of course, has to be virtual, and we have to create an internet platform that we didn't have before. Orchestrating means thinking about, I will show you a slide later, how we deal with events, how we want to put events in a far broader term in the general public. So to expand our exposure and to enhance the position of the company, and of course, within the mindset, not only of customers, but of the general public. And to be an enabler. We didn't want just to tell people to do something, we wanted to be a helper, to actually get our colleagues worldwide moving to think in different dimensions, in global dimensions. Maybe they're acting locally, but they have to also think globally in a company like ours. There are six permanent members within the hub each have a function. You have the editor who's taking care of the general terms and dealing with communications and managing overall, I would say, strategic um, messaging for the whole group. You have the channel operational head who's dealing with all the various channels, and I mean also classic channels, so TV as well, and the same as social media. What was very important, and I will show you some slides, is media intelligence. Um, we basically are in my ex post. We're always looking where we, what we've done in the past. And we've actually created a system with an agency to have real-time analysis of when a press, a press release goes out or a message goes out to see where it lands. I will show you that in a few seconds. So we also have a planner and we also have a content manager. And I won't go into too much detail, but they are there to help those 400 communicators around the world. What we wanted to make clear here was for you is that there had to be, that's what we learned from our benchmarking. You need a physical place. We at first thought we were going to just go virtual. And we heard, don't do that because the mindset within a company, and most people are, as we're all in this room, very visual, tactile. We need to experience immediately. And of course, we had to move people around. We created a space, and we made it clear. That's why we called it a hub and not a newsroom. And I'll show you some photos. It's basically a place where everyone can meet. There is a role every morning at 8.30. There are ambassadors from various parts of the company who meet in the hub physically, and some call in. And just like a newsroom in this case, they have half an hour. And that's another thing you have to understand with companies and when you understand communicators, we, some not are, we are not very good at time management. So we had to have somebody there to really keep track of the time. And now, after the first six months, we're actually better. People are getting done in 20 minutes. What's going on yesterday, today, looking forward in the future? What are our options? What do we want to do? And at the same time, these ambassadors are the only ones initially to be able to speak because we thought if we had 20, 30, 40 people speaking, you'd never get anything done. But everybody is invited to come to that morning meeting. Right after that, a minutes goes out worldwide in English to everybody. What were the topics? What's coming down the road? What board member is going to be there? What expert is going to be there? And giving a far greater transparency within the group and actually leveraging our communications and our potential as a company in the outside world. The other thing is also the hub is a place you can meet. We also invite experts throughout the whole company to come to speak for 10 minutes and have a discussion for 20. We're really trying to optimize the use of time because this is something in social media, as we all know, everything is rapid and the pace is rapid. There is a downside. Not everybody can handle the pace. And this is where we are being challenged. And I'm being honest with you. There, I would say, 60% of the people are gun ho And there's like 20, 30 who are saying, I'm not sure yet. So we have to, because we are a large company, and most of our employees are in Germany, and we have to deal with a lot of issues, you have to have as many people as possible to buy into this new structure. So this is the physical place of the hub. Um, and it seems very easy, but if you know anything about our building in Munich, 
you have to be very careful how much weight is on each cylinder. <laughs> so we had to have an expert come in and help us to build this facility within one of the cylinders. But what I think is good is people now are actually coming and using it throughout the whole day. In the beginning, it was at 8.30, to 10 o'clock it was full, and then suddenly it was empty the whole day. And we began to realize they're not understanding the principle of this and how to utilize it for themselves. So I think we're doing a lot better. People are actually coming, connecting, exchange. This is what we're trying to promote internally. So agenda setting, new tools. You can imagine that a company like Germany, where, uh, in, uh, by BMW, in Germany, everything is about processes. Unfortunately, in the communication division, we're not so process-oriented. But at the same time, we realize we need to become more so in some areas if we want to be effective in social media. Who's responsible for what channel? Who's responsible for what media, et cetera, et cetera. So you have to be worldwide. And also looking at our colleagues, for example, in China and the USA, who are far ahead of us when it gets to social media. I'm not sure if they're doing everything perfect, but they definitely have something that we can learn from them because they have a lot more uh, fluidness in their society. And in Germany, because of the German history, dealing with data, and it's hard for people to understand, people are very nervous about their personal data. And so you have to be very careful how we deal and approach that in Germany. Nonetheless, if you look on one side before, everything was sort of compartmentalized. Excel-based, editing plans, email-based, project coordination, we'd send emails out, et cetera, et cetera. And then the whole thing, I think, is even worse. We had fragmented storage even within our own division. So this department had that, et cetera. So we've done away with that, and we've created a massive platform that everyone has to use. And you can imagine at first, like anything, everyone says, I'm willing to change, but don't touch my data. I'm, you can change, but not me. So we actually did a lot of training. We went around the world training people to get on board to use this system. And of course, it looks and like a nightmare, the next slide. But it actually helps people to organize their thoughts. General question, what is my topic? What is my communication goal? What are your three main core messages? You ask anybody in a company, you say, what's your core message? You get 20. Most people don't want 20. What are the three? So we're basically training our people how to become better communicators and how to understand the outside world. And have I chosen the most efficient channel to get my message out there? This is kind of a systematic teaching thing. So we're going external communications, internal communications. And I really like this one little piece of a, like a hint, or a don't forget, international markets, because we're very German-oriented in Germany. So the first thing is say, hey, did you think about your story could be interesting in China or the USA or here in Austria? So trying to broaden our perspective around the world. So this is something that we actually uh, came up with ourselves after we visit other companies, and I think um, it's helping us to become better at communicators. So we are tracking, in the past, we would track our media, and this is around the world. I didn't, this is just an example, but it's always exposed. And then we devise the system. And if you look at the point here, if we put something out, where is it going? Which media picked it up? In which country? Which country got the most coverage? Which is positive? Which is negative? Can we? do some kind of adjustment here right now. So we've actually gotten better at trying to handle our messaging uh, compared with in the past. So I don't want to go into too much detail, but this is one of the examples sort of like this ecosystem where we designed these plans looking at we had a, did a joint venture, as you know, with Daimler. It's called You Now. And we discussed how can we utilize it to the max in a social media way. And this mapping, we are now learning to get better at it because we're looking at events very differently than in the past. And we're trying to get into this whole social media and taking social media in consideration when we're doing various activities. So for example, this year in Geneva, the Motor Show, we decided not to do a classical 
normal motor show where we show a vehicle, everyone claps and leaves. We actually, a few days before, offered on social media people to pose questions to our CEO. So when he came, we actually had around 20, 30 questions. They were, they were put forward to him. Those that we couldn't answer within the hour, we actually continued to answer with experts just to accept the fact that we wanted to be polite. If you ask a question, you deserve an answer. So I think this is where things are going, and we're thinking about how can we do events differently than we did in the past, because social media, of course, is changing the way we do our business and the way we communicate. So, before I leave, I'd like to take one more point, and that is, I really think you have to find, we have to find this sweet spot between social media and personal contact with journalists, media reps, and influencers. I think you can't just say we're going to go just to social media. We have to find that sweet spot. We're not there yet. But I'm not giving up because I think there's a chance on both sides. And I still believe that a good talk with a late night talk with a good journalist is worth maybe one tweet in social media. So having said that, thank you very much for your time. I think I have done. three minutes, right? Yeah, please. So I do have three minutes, sorry. Can I show the last three slides? I just want to show something. Because I think it would it kind of even answer. Do you have it? Or you don't? Can I have the? I just wanted to show you a backup. This will give you some figures of where we are and the difference between our brand <laughs> and the corporate. As you can see, at Facebook and in LinkedIn, we actually, and in Twitter, we have a lot of followers. And you can see the power of the brand the number of people following the brand. So we can't really compete. There are different category of uh, target groups here. But I also wanted to show you the next slide. It sounds, this is, a, this is a tool that we designed, and if you click on one of these icons, it opens up and it relates back to that, diet, that um, matrix that I showed you asking those questions. So who's responsible? What's taking place? Who's doing what? So everybody can click on this and knows exactly what's happening in a day. We're still working on it. We have now, right now, about uh, 25, 30 top countries who have been supplying this. We started this in October. Our goal is to have them all on board, so in one day, we know exactly what's going on around the world, and you might be able to add some positive uh, spin or your ideas to that event or perhaps that message. So having said, I just want to let you know. And what's important, we're going to do something which in Germany is not so easy because you have to deal with the Works Council. We're going to have a Mitarbeiter uh, app, an employee app that they can put onto their personal cell phone. And it, of course, was, we wanted to make it personalized, so it will have their shift schedule, time log, they'll have their um, vacation time, also their salary, so that they can actually customize it for them. And we think that's very much part of BMW, which is a premium brand, so should we offer premium services to our employees. Thank you for your patience. Herzlichen Dank. Ihr Applaus. Danke. Herzlichen Dank.